You're listening to the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, brought to you by the Vacation Rental Formula Business School. Are you ready to take your vacation rental business to the next level? Invest in the knowledge and training you need to get there. With the Vacation Rental Formula Business School, you can gain access to an exclusive course library that covers topics like marketing, pricing, strategies, operations, and more. Become one of our founding members today and get exclusive access to all additional content produced in the years to come. Whether you're just starting out or want to expand your existing business, you'll learn invaluable lessons from the top industry experts. So don't wait any longer. Secure your spot today at vacationrentalformula.com forward slash biz school and start your journey to success. Are you ready for today's podcast? Let's get started. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. On today's show, I am talking to my friend and business colleague, Jody Bourne, and we're talking about content marketing again. Reason being is that it is becoming more and more important that we get this aspect of our business right in a, an increasingly competitive world. And we will, of course, be touching on AI as well, as well as something that's really bugging me a little bit, and that's Instagram reels and short videos. So let's go and talk with Jody. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new and what will help make your business a success. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer, and as ever, I'm super delighted to be back with you once again. You know, every so often I start looking back and thinking, you know, I've been in this business for over 25 years now. You know, it's around 25 years since I first started buying properties and then, of course, going into the property management company, and there was 20 years in that. And now, it's nine, 10 months ago that I actually sold the company and time really, really moves on. But I, I got to thinking about content and looking back. In fact, what I was doing was going through the content that was on my old cottage blogger website. And there was a ton of it, probably around about 400 blog posts. And, and I'm going to be repurposing some of those because some of those posts are pretty evergreen, you know, things that I was talking about back in 2006 and 2007 are just as relevant today. So as I'm looking at those and thinking about repurposing, I was also looking at some of the coursework that I created at that time. And, you know, there were, there were courses on how to blog and how to use Twitter and a number of other relatively simple courses just on getting content out there. And that got me thinking about how things have really, really changed because some of those courses are completely out of date now. And they're going to be completely reworked and we're going to be introducing AI into them. We're going to be introducing all sorts of new ways of showcasing properties with different types of marketing strategies. And there's a whole new world. There's a whole new world out there of marketing and creating just amazing content to drive traffic to our websites. And that's one thing that's not changing, the fact that we do need a website if we're going to go forward with a book direct strategy. So with that in mind, you know that I am really hot on AI and chat GPT and all things machine learning. So we will be covering some of that in my conversation with marketing expert, Jody Bourne. Now, for those of you who are interested in our Vacation Rental Formula Business School, Jody has created some great courses in the foundation part of the course, which is still open, by the way. And I'll make sure that there's a link in the show notes to the Vacation Rental Business School and you can go and take a look and see what courses we have available. But yet yeah, Jody is a major part of creating these foundation courses. And she's joining me today to talk about the changes 
in content marketing, what she has seen over the last few years and providing some tips on how to create really engaging content going forward. This is going to be super interesting. So I'm really looking forward to this chat with Jody. So let's go straight on over to the interview. I am super delighted to have with me once again, my friend, my business colleague, Jody Bourne. Jody, you're a regular on the show now. So, you know, I know people look forward to listening to you and hearing all the bombs of wisdom that you drop. And this episode is going to be no different. So welcome back. Thank you, Heather. Thanks for having me. You know how much I enjoy it. And yes, you're right. I told somebody yesterday that I was going to be on and they they were in wait to, to hear what we were going to be talking about. So. <laughs> well, it's it's because marketing is the most exciting bit about doing this business. And you can't really get super excited about new toilet seats or I, I think if you're Alana Schroeder, you can probably get excited about linens and, and bedding. And, I, and I've just I talked recently to a great guy called Keith Brady from Florida Vacation Rental Law. And we had a 40 minute discussion on the legal side of this business. And it was really, really good. But marketing is fun. For some. For some. And, but it's becoming funner. Is funner mm-hmm. a word? I think funner's a no, word. We'll, 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 fun. we'll, we'll go for funner. <laughs> Let's funner. More fun. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. So, we're going to be talking about the really the two aspects of it is creating content and then sharing content. It's Mm -hmm. because you can spend a lot of time and have a lot of fun creating it. But if then, if then you just sits there on a website and nobody ever gets to see it, it's, it's particularly worthless. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's, let's just kick off with the very basic question with, how important is content marketing for short-term rental management? And I, I've asked this question of many people. I've probably asked it of you before, <laughs> but I don't think I ever get tired of the answer because we, we've we all been through that traditional marketing that we did many years ago. Yep. But content marketing still has so much value. Oh, it, in fact, they're, they're saying now that 2023 is going to be a a big year in differentiating with content marketing and, you know, really elevating your content for professional marketers. You know, I get all these industry reports and trend reports and and for the, the big companies and all the things that the big companies do, of course, trickles down to the small mom and pop businesses like we have and like we um, we help. So I'm glad you said content marketing is marketing is fun because it really can be. I think that's such a, you know, a lot of people come at it as I've got to do this. I have to do this. And really, if you think about it in like, this is an opportunity to be creative and to share what you know, which is what content marketing is, is really just being your most hospitable self and sharing who you are and what you know about your destination or the experience that you're providing and then creating that content and then sharing it, which is extremely important. Yes, exactly. Let's talk a little bit more about you know, creating this compelling content. And we are going to talk about later, you know, we cannot have any conversation with anybody these days without mentioning AI and the options there are. Stay till later, people, because we're going to drop some really good information on the fact that, you know, chat GPT is not the only platform out there. And we've got some other really great platforms for you to be thinking about using. But let's just kick off with, you know, how operators can create this compelling content that actually resonates with their guests. And I think that's the most important part. You can you can use chat GPT all you want and, and create a ton of content. But if it's not, yeah. if it's not resonating with the people that you've targeted, then it's wasted effort. Yeah, that's right. And I think that's one of the important reasons to be using it is to resonate, to show your personality and your authority or your um, expertise in your area is, you know, creating lists and ideas and content about things to do, what to see, what to do, but thinking about it from the perspective of your 
target market, which, you know, I call your perfect guest. Um, your perfect guest is that though those people that you really, really love doing business with and love wanting to help and have you've created this space for them. So as you're creating your content, think about what those people want to know. Like, what do they want to read about? What is it that is informing their decisions about where they're going to visit? And also think about them from different points in the in the buyer's journey, their journey into finding where they're going to go. I think so many people focus on that last step of book my home that they're not thinking about creating, which, you know, you definitely talk about a lot. And, and I know you're going to you're covering in some in your content marketing course that you're going to be building out. But is creating content that hits people in the various stages of even making a decision of where they're going to go. Maybe they know they're going to go take a fishing trip but they don't even know where they're going to go fishing or maybe they're going skiing and they're looking for information about the best ski resorts for children. There's so many different ways you can create content to hit different people in the different stages of, of what they're doing. Yeah. And, and that's, that's really important because I think a lot of people think that if they, if they build this content, it's for people that have already booked. So they I can know. send them this stuff once they've booked, but it, if you can get them onto your site while they're just thinking about where they're going to go and have, yeah. that, have that information all in one place. And I, I don't know, I, I seem to have been banging this drum for many years and it, and it still doesn't hit it. home. I mean, it does. I think people are getting it. They're just not really, I think one of the most important things that people should do is really put themselves into the place of being their target market and going out into their community and seeing the things from that perspective. Stop looking at things from the perspective of you as someone who's lived there forever or who vacations there every season. And think about this small family with children and, and young children. What are they specifically looking for? And uh, one of the ideas that I was thinking about, I had written some blog posts several years ago for a guy who had property in Joshua Tree. And his properties were were right out on the outskirts, um, very beautiful home with a pool and everything, very family friendly. And we instead of writing like generic content about the best hiking trails in Joshua Tree, which there's millions of articles about that, about that mm-hmm. we wrote content specifically for families. What are five must do activities with your kids in Joshua Tree? Where can you go at night in Joshua Tree that's safe for families? Those kinds of articles. And and they did so well, not only on his blog, but also, you know, we shared on social media. And so that's what I mean by knowing your target market and creating specific content for them. He was a single guy, yeah. you know, in his 30s. He knew nothing about families, but he knew that's what the, the place he had created had. That was the experience was for families. And so those that was the content that worked for him. Yeah. Sue Allen in um, in England, Norfolk. So she has um, her company's called East Ruston Cottages. And her niche is people who, who have multiple dogs. Mm-hmm. And the content that's on on her site is pointing is is all about the dog parks and the dog friendly beaches and all the restaurants where you can take your pet and you know, you know, other and museums just all sorts of pet friendly places and this is what people are out there looking for long before mm-hmm. they decide that they're going to come and rent a space because they probably they probably have no idea they can take their multiple dogs and she said you know anything up to 6 10 dogs she has properties wow. that ha- that will take multiple multiple pets, and, and that's hard to find. I know, sure but she has created this this niche and and she's running with it. But that's it. That information is there for people to find when they're out there saying, you know, I'm going to Norfolk. And where can I take my dogs? Mm-hmm. And that and that's you know that's a great example of how you actually market with content because we can talk about how to create content, what types of content, but how is it part of your marketing strategy is what's, you know, what you really need to understand is that by creating that content, not only do you have this information that's good for, you know, someone Google searching, what do I do in Norfolk with dogs or what do I do in Joshua tree with kids? But it's also good because it, a, it tells people, Hey, this is somebody that knows what they're talking about. They care about me as a person and as a guest and the experience I want to have. And 
it gives them, you know, you can put this on your blog, which you should if you have a blog. But if you don't have a blog and you don't have time to, to create a blog or you don't have the tech skills to create a blog, you can also use it on social media just as effectively. Um, and even if you do have a blog, you should take that same content and put it on social media. So don't forget that that social media is part of this strategy is important. And then you're sending people back and forth while they're still making these shit reading your blog post about this, but they're now they're following you on Facebook and they see that you've written another blog post all about how to, you know, what beach to go to and then what restaurant to go to. And so pretty soon you have become their authority Mm -hmm. on this destination. You've become the person they trust there's no question in their mind that they're going to book your property if you've let them know you have a property, because that's a, something I see quite often that people get bogged down and sharing all this great content and then forget, oh, yeah, by the way, you want to book my house over here. <laughs> but, you know, that. so that's what I mean by the content strategy is just as important as knowing what content to create is knowing how to use it in in the rest of your marketing. Okay, let's take that on uh, to the next level and and consider some social media strategies for for reaching potential guests. Which platforms should people (laughs) focus on? I know we've we've talked about this before, but it you know and I'm and you know I'm having this struggle, this never ending (laughs) five year struggle with Instagram. (laughs) Yes, our very first our very first talk was on Instagram, and that was when I created my very first course, which was on Instagram. Um, so, and updating it now because the struggle with Instagram is real. I mean, people people really struggle with it. But I still think, I mean, if you have images of your destination and videos of your destination and your properties, or you can get that because you can definitely outsource the content, the, the actual video and, and, mm-hmm. you know, it can be expensive, but I know people that have hired 18 year old high school students to go out and you give them a list of things you want them to do and want them to take photos of, and they can take the photos and the videos and then you have them. But once you, you know, so Instagram, I think everybody needs to be on, you need to be mastering it and think of it as your own mini website. Your Instagram profile page is can be a full website uh, with the content pieces, the videos, the, the images, the captions, the Instagram stories. You can now, uh, Instagram has allowed you to focus on three kind of pinned posts that can be at the top of your profile on Instagram. So you can feature specific things. So feature who you are, Feature who your property, your one of your properties or your general properties, and then feature your expertise. Now I'm talking all about Instagram. So <laughs> backing up, you know, I get excited. I also think everybody should for sure have a Facebook and a, a Facebook page and be in Facebook groups, not just vacation rental specific Facebook groups, but groups about your mm-hmm. experience and your destination. See the kinds of things people are asking and be the expert in your field there. I've, That's super important. I've seen some really great Facebook groups where owners and property managers have created a group mm-hmm. uh, about their location. And then of course yeah. you get the, the Facebook, you know, if you set it up correctly, then on the image at the top, it says that the, the group is by, yep. by you. So, by you. so, so for, um, for example, um, my Facebook group, which is the business of short-term rental and professional property management. It says on the front is by vacation rental formula. Yep. yep. So you have it out there you, and you do not have to get into these groups and start talking about yourself. You talk about the location and uh-huh. people will to begin do. to follow you. Yeah. And that's just a, a, a great, that's content marketing. You're creating and sharing content. So, you know, the the social media aspect of it is super important for doing your research, finding your target audience and for and for putting that content out there. And that's, you know, one one of the things that I really tell people is don't forget that your content is not one and done. You don't just write a blog post and leave it on your blog and hope people find it with Google search. You, that piece of content should be used over and over and over. If it's an article about 10 things to do on a rainy day, then every day for the next month post in your social media, one of those 10 things to do on a rainy day. And then 
it's so easy. How often does it rain here? Okay, it's raining tomorrow. I'm going to post, you know, the third thing to do on a rainy day and tell people, oh, by the way, here's a whole list of my 10 favorite things to do on a rainy day in Destin. And you keep posting that over and over again. So you don't just forget about it. It's it's continuous. So I know what, what happens with me, Jody, is that I get all these these wonderful ideas mm-hmm. and they they just disappear out of my head. Or I might write them down on a piece of paper or on one of my numerous notebooks. <laughs> Because right. I think every time I go to an event, I come back with, with three or four different notebooks and I, I have this, this goal of having one notebook for each topic and it, it never mm-hmm. works. It never works because I, have, so I get an idea and I'll just pick up the nearest one and write right. something down in it. And I never find all these ideas. So that was a long way round of, of saying, how do you sort of coordinate all this stuff? Well, <laughs> so that's hard. And that's the hardest part people have when they come to me. That's the issue. They have tons and tons of videos and images and things, and they don't know what to do with it or how to set it up. So it's like everything else. You have to start really slowly. There's if with so Facebook owns Instagram. They have a product called Facebook's Creator Studio. If you have a business Facebook page, you have access to it and you can create draft posts. So this is what I tell people to do. I also have a product called the Social Media Suitcase, which is a planning calendar um, that I sell with content prompts. You can use something like that as well. I sell it and tons of other people have similar products in all different industries. But you can go to, I'm trying to pick up my mouse and go on my screen to show you. We're not doing that kind of uh, video, (laughs) but you can go to this and it has a calendar. And even if you're not ready to post yet, set up your drafts. Mm. So set up a draft for every Friday, every other Friday, put up a draft, share the article about 10 things to do with dogs, share the article about this. And you put it in there for over the next six months, go for six months, you know, and every other Friday do this. I have, you know, one of my thing is foodie Friday. You know, if you can't think of something to to put in on a Friday, do a foodie post, something about food on Friday and then get that, planned out. Then a week later, go in and go, okay, now I have to come up with every post idea for the next three weeks or three months about what blog post I'm going to promote on that week. And that's where GPT and the AI can definitely come in handy. You just write in a little thing. I want an Instagram post about scuba diving in Florida, and it can help you create that. Um, And we'll talk uh, more about it in the end, but that's where you can use that, make that time go by much more effectively Um, when you, where you're able to use prompts and then go back and and talk about it and then put it into some sort of calendar. And as for the ideas, I'm sorry, I interrupt. I can't stop talking. You know me, but as for ideas, I'm like you too. I have multiple notebooks. My best gift I bought for myself was called a Remarkable Tablet. It's an electronic tablet. I love it. And you can tag your ideas. And so I use that now all the time when I'm listening to podcasts and I'm putting in ideas and I just put a tag on it called, you know, content marketing ideas or Instagram ideas. And then I can search through all of them electronically. And then it also put it in my Google Drive for me. I've still got to get one of these things. It's the best thing. I've recommended it to so many people and everybody comes back to me and says it's the, one of the best things they've ever used. Pricey though, isn't it? Yeah, it's like 500 bucks for just a writing pad. But if you're a note taker like I am and mm-hmm. you are, you know, I carry it around in my purse and I have it with me all the time right beside me. Yeah. It holds a great charge. So, um, <laughs> but so, you know, that, that is a struggle is what do I do with these ideas? And, you know, I, I all often say, Take one idea from a show and implement it. Mm -hmm. Just figure out a way to implement it. And then two months later, when you've got that idea down and you've implemented it and you feel confident in your ability to replicate, then go back to that show, get another tip or go to your list of things that you wrote down and implement something else. You can't do it all at once. Well, we're helping the audience now because every show now has a full transcript. It's something ah. that something that people have been asking for for a long, long time. But yes, so you, you can just go back to the show notes if 
you listen to something and you think, oh, I know I have heard something about such and such a, a platform or resource, you can go back to every episode. Well, not every episode. We've been doing it for about three or four months now, but we are going to be slowly transcribing as many of the most popular podcasts as we can. So I just wanted That's to throw right. that in there. Because I know what I'm, I'm, I'm out walking and I'm, I'm listening to James Wedmore or Pat Flynn or some of these digital marketing people that I absolutely love. And mm -hmm. they'll throw out this absolute nugget. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking, oh my God, I've got to stop it. And I'm going to tell Siri to send this message to my, to me, to remember mm -hmm. this. It was a great quote. And then I totally forget that yeah. I did it. But you know what is a good idea for that <laughs> is, and I just started this because somebody shared with this with me, when you're walking or doing something and you hear something like that, go really quick to your podcast screen on your phone and take a screenshot and it gives you the minute mark of wow. where you're listening. And then you get home and you get all your groceries unloaded or whatever. And then you can look through your, your camera photos real quick and just jot it down. Oh, that, that is a great tip too. Excellent. Uh -huh. Excellent. Because yep. well, I thought we jumped on the transcription bandwagon quite a, a bit late, but in fact, we haven't. Um, there's a lot of shows that do not have transcripts. And I know people have been asking us about it for years. Yeah. Um, but and that's great SEO content too, because the Google can see that we're getting way off track. Okay. 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 Right. Well, we sort of were we talking about videos or am I just going to segue now into creating videos? Because I have, I have just signed up for a, for a course that I'm doing on creating better YouTube videos and building out my YouTube channel. So it's very front and center of my mind now, but can you talk about creating engaging videos for, for, for the business? You know, how, you, how can people use video to showcase their location and bring in potential guests? Because we see it all on, you know, the reels and TikToks and um, mm -hmm. shorts. Yep. I think that people make the mistake of thinking they have to be so perfect and professional. And that's the mistake I make and I'm struggling with is, you know, I'm very much um, my own. So when I go out and start talking to people on reels and TikToks, I feel very like fake, I guess. It's, and I know other people tell me the same thing, that they are hesitant to create content because it doesn't look professional, but that's how you get better at it and is you just start. And with video content now, I mean, you have to be doing some sort of video. So just go out there and practice. And one of the things I have is, is something I call a content marketing matrix that I help people build out their content. What's that? What is a content library? And one of the things, for example, let's say it's the 10 best appetizers, your favorite 10 appetizers in a certain location. So that's a very specific topic that you can go out and take a short video of that happening over a week or two weeks or a month. Or, you know, if you go out every time you go out in your destination and you just think to yourself, OK, what am I going to get today that goes back to my target audience and these ideas that you've created, then you just take a video of it. And it doesn't have to be a pro video. Tell the waiter, hey, I'm going to take a video of you bringing me out my potato skins, you know, and so be sure and smile and be a nice person because you're representing this restaurant or whatever. And those little snippets, video snippets, you can call them B-roll or real, you keep those together, create a folder on your phone, create a folder in your Google Drive or wherever you're using and keep those together and just try to keep it as organized as possible. And then you've got content to use any time you want. You've got a video of somebody bringing out an appetizer. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you said that because I always thought video, you know, you had to do it, to plan it, go out, do it, publish it. And it's only while I've been sort of planning out my Instagram uh -huh. account, which is really not up and running yet, but it will be soon. And <laughs> uh, it, I, I've done it for my dog. It's called The Britta Diaries. And it's about my crazy dog and her, you know, what she does that's crazy. You know, the, you know, the broken dog thing. Yeah. You know, my dog lies down yeah. in a corner. She's got legs all over the place and her head's twisted around in a really weird angle 
and you know my dog is broken well i've got you know a selection of my dog is broken videos that is so cute I follow Britta's page, but I haven't been on Instagram a lot lately. Jolene follows Britta too, by the way, on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And if, if you guys aren't watching this on video at the moment, you're missing Jolene. <laughs> she <laughs> she, she just... hears your voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, so here's an example. Though. I, yeah, as you know, Michael and I um, are looking to buy a vacation rental. We've been looking at all the different places and we've kind of narrowed our choice down to Crystal Beach, Texas, which is um, near Galveston. It's a great little kind of small community beach. And we go there really often. We have some friends that own a restaurant there, Tia Juanita's in Crystal Beach. And so we were going there for Mardi Gras. And I took a time-lapse video on my iPhone of the Mardi Gras parade And then afterwards, I took time lapse videos of the crawfish boil party that we went to another Mardi Gras event. We went to their restaurant where they had they were part of a pub crawl and they had people come and get boudin balls and all sorts of, you know, Mardi Gras beads and things. And I took all that video content. And now I have about 10 minutes worth of video in different little snippets. Like here's a snippet of a a couple of children on a marker float throwing beads at me. And that's all it is. But now I have all that content. So if I do start, if I do buy a vacation rental there, I will have content. If I don't, then maybe one of these days I'll have, you know, a client that just needs some Mardi Gras footage, um, Mm -hmm. you know, that I, that I have that little snippet of somebody throwing beads from a float. It doesn't have to be destination specific. It's just a Mardi, you know, Mardi Gras parade. So that those kind of things that people should think about go out during the day and think what kind of content can I get? You may not even know that you're using it in the future. And, you know, like one of the, an Instagram posts that I did for a client a while back, and, and this was a Texas client. So I only do Instagram for Texas clients, but we had a client and they had a beach house in South Padre. My team, my uh, girls and I went down and took a bunch of his February, but it was a beautiful, sunny February day. We took a video uh, or actually some still shots and video of this girl sitting in the hot tub on a sunny day, threw out some like little kid floaties in the pool that are kind of floating. And then she's sitting there with a hot tub enjoying a pretend pina colada at nine o'clock on a Friday, Thursday morning. But that content was a short video that we worked into multiple Instagram reels. We took steel shots of the same thing. We put it on their blog, sent it out in an email newsletter. I mean, that piece of content was, became like a calling card for, mm-hmm. for their property. And they sold it. But when they sold it, they sold the content as part of that exchange. And so the people that, you know, the last time I looked, they were still using that video that we created in their content. So that's really an important part of creating content for specific for your rental is thinking about your target market and what do they want to see? How can you put them into that house, that destination, that experience? Yeah, and it... You've got to get out of your head about quality, as you said. I mean, yes, it has to be quality in terms of using a decent camera on if you have a decent iPhone um, mm-hmm. or a decent your decent phone with a good camera. But you don't have to go out and buy the digital SLR and and um, nope. fancy tripod. Um, it does not nope. have to be like that. And I had to get out of my head a lot because mm-hmm. I, I was spending hours going on to YouTube videos on equipment for creating YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Thinking that that is the perfect thing. The, and when really it's, it's so much about the personality of you and your, and your target market and the brand that you want to present. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, Give some tips then for those. I mean, I think one of the tips is is do it. Go and start collecting some video footage of mm-hmm. your location. That yep. would be the first one. Anything else? Well, one of the tips that I think is extremely helpful for people is to create a fake Instagram account. Nobody has to know that it's you behind an Instagram account. You don't have to put your real name. So I tell people this all the time. Just go start If you don't want to put your real name, your property name, your business name behind it, just start one for your destination. 
here's Destin, Florida favorites. And that becomes you and you create your content and your reels. And who cares if you mess up? Mm -hmm. Because nobody knows it's you. And then then how how do people find you from that? Well, you're, you have to practice sharing that content using hashtags. Um, you have to understand how to, how to use that content to, to, and promote that content. But Instagram is still one of the few places, Instagram and TikTok both, you can still get people to find you just by engaging with other people as your, that brand name. So like that, Instagram page, you know, like Jolene has it in Britta. They have their own Instagram page. Nobody knows that Jolene, Miss Pris Jolene is really Jody Bourne. I, as her persona, I can go out and follow people, comment on their videos, comment on their posts, like their stuff, follow them. They'll follow me back. So you can still do all of that as this fake persona. Yeah. And this, and this is exactly what I'm doing with the Britta Diaries is doing my practicing once I get it up and running, which I will do. Yes. And then it's just about generating those habits, yeah. you know, the daily habit. Oh, inter- interesting, because I'm just mm-hmm. finishing a book, a couple of books I've, I've been reading about habits. And Atomic habits. Hmm? Atomic habits. Atomic is habits. That J- James Clear. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've read a, Atomic Habits and there's, a, there's another one as well. Sort of the, the book that James Clear based his Atomic Habits on. I'll put the links to those in the show notes because it really is interesting that, you know, once you have created a habit and had it running for 30 days or so, it is pretty much ingrained. It's like I get up every yeah. single morning and regardless of the weather and regardless of how I feel, I put my walking shoes on and I'm out the door with the dog and we do an hour every single day. Do you know, since we've been down here in Gulf Shores, I have done a a averaged five miles a day. So that's quite a lot. Four months is three, 600 miles. That's great. Mm. That's great. And I'm going to be down there in May. I know after I've gone. (laughs) And that's what I'm doing. I'm going down to Gulf Shores to do con to create content for a a vacation rental owner. And I'm going to be doing all I'm going to be doing what she lives in Minnesota. So I'm going to be making her content library for her. So, you know, that's super fun for me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I I think that is, you know, if, if, if you're out there listening, and you don't live in your area, mm-hmm. then, you know, that's, that's what you need to, to, to be doing is, is having somebody, you know, give them a couple of days in your property to, yep. to go down and create your content for you. I mean, you've got to know yep. them. You've got to be, be, I mean, we're not talking about influencers here. We're talking about some content creators. People are going to walk around and go to the restaurants and go to the beach and go to the stores and, maybe do a whale watching trip or mm-hmm. go out dolphin watching or what I'm doing tomorrow is I'm going out kayaking on the, on the canals and I'm going to be creating, to taking, you know, doing some content there. So if anybody wants any content on <laughs> Gulf, Sh- Gulf Shores and kayaking, then I will have it. You can <laughs> first bid up. <laughs> well, and- you know, there, there's people that do that. My, um, my husband's nephew, my nephew um, does that. For living, he he creates content and sells it. Yeah, for as a freelancer, lots of people do it. Now it's expensive. It's better for you to hire someone or to learn how to do it yourself or or whatever. But you know, take a full day and mm-hmm. just go, you have to go down to your property to do the maintenance every year and all the things. So have spend one day creating content. Yeah, and then just put it in a in a folder somewhere that you yeah. can. Just don't forget where you put your folder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No okay, let's let's move on a little bit to um, brand voice and and messaging strategies. How can people develop their and communicate their brand effectively through these content marketing efforts they're doing? I think once again, it just goes back to being true to your your brand personality and and who what your brand values are if if your brand value is um, environmentally conscious or environmentally mm-hmm. focused be sure that you're creating content about that that 
people who are interested or who care about environmentally friendly things to do or nature or animals or uh, the, the cleaning materials you're using, be sure you're creating that kind of content around that value so that you can truly say, this is one of the things we value. I'm proving that because here is my article about all the conservation groups. Mm-hmm. here, you know, perhaps. And, and that's also a great way that you can write a blog post about your property. So you can write a blog post, the 10 best environmentally friendly cleaning supplies that I use in my vacation rental. Well, somebody reading that could be somebody just planning to use environmentally product, environmentally good, I, don't, I lost the word, uh, products in their own vacation rental. Who cares? You're, you're showing your brand personality and your brand values by having that content on your blog. You're telling people who are interested in that, who might be interested in coming to your vacation rental, that you value them and you value these things. And so that's important to your audience as well. And then, of course, it gives you great content. I mean, how about a, a video, a reel on Instagram or just a, a post on Facebook of your 10 environmentally friendly cleansing product, cleaning products that you use. So much content just from that one value of we value the environment and taking care of the environment. And, and, and so, you know, j- you know, just on that topic, you know, a booking.com did a, a study relatively recently that just showed how many people are looking for environmental I was going to say friendliness, yes. but in you know sustainability, yes, the sustainability impact of them coming to your vacation rental. And if you can help them with that, then they're more likely to book with you. So it's really interesting that that is going up and up. Yes, and that's um, I'm really enjoying seeing people talk about that as a value now for, mm-hmm. for their businesses, and and that and whatever your value, you know, maybe that that may not be a value for you. Maybe one of your values for your business is families. Maybe mm-hmm. you value family time. How can you create content about that? So using your values, and then also using your own personality. You know, what are the the words and phrases that you're wanting to use. So I suggest to people that they get a whole list of of words that they want to use and they continue to use them over and over again and be known for them. Like Spoon Mountain Glamping that I've worked with, they use the word spooning a lot. And it's, you know, spooning is, you know what spooning is, right? Yes. (laughs) So, um, so when you're, I didn't know if that was a, an, an American word or not, not that there's a lot of difference, but you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, so they talk about spooning and it's a fun word and it, it's a romantic word, fun and youthful. And it really gives you a vision of people spooning at Spoon Mountain, yes. but they also, they give away these little spoon keychains with, for their repeat guests. And so they've incorporated that word into so many aspects of their brand. And then their content is all about things to do as a couple, all their content, couple, 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 couple. Yes. Yeah. I, lo- I love that. That That is such a great example. Such a great example. Um, just yeah. a very quick shout out because we were talking about sustainability and I want to shout out to Bob Garner of Enviro Rental and uh, Vanessa de Souza Lage, who has, um, she's been on the show a few times and she's created, you know, it's a new platform called Sustonica. I'll be meeting up with Vanessa in Barcelona uh, in uh, May and we'll be talking to her about Sustonica. It's a certificate that people will be able to claim for their sustainable properties. And that's awesome. Yeah. I am really excited about hearing more about that. Hey, you know how time moves on so quickly when we talk and we haven't been, we haven't talked really about AI. We did tease at the beginning that we were going to talk about other platforms because we have, you know, everybody's heard about chat GPT and, Mm -hmm. and I've been talking recently about prompts, the prompts to use. But when we started our discussion this morning, you said that, you know, you've been using AI for a number of years. It wasn't mm-hmm. you. It wasn't new to you when it came out. Yes. Yes. I've been using um, a couple of different ones. The first one I started using was just a headline generator tool. And I've, I've actually forgotten the name of that one. But that was I mean, I started using that in 2018 or 19 to generate blog post headlines and topics. But for me, a word hero is a great, great to use. Now, and then there's also Jasper. 
which used to be Jarvis and is now Jasper, but I might be saying that backwards. It might have used to been Jasper and now Jarvis, but I'm pretty sure it started out as Jarvis as as Jarvis and it's now Jasper. They had to change it because somebody was suing them because of the, the business. Yeah, hasn't it now become adaptive? Adaptive.ai. No, no, it's Jasper, I think. Is it still Jasper? Well, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I just yeah, I just logged in. Okay. So Jasper, they all have free versions or free trials or whatever. Um, but they do cost. Word Hero is a good one. With Word Hero, you can put in the personality you want to use. Or with Word Hero, another c- cool thing that you can do is you can put in specific hashtags that you want to, like if you're wanting to write a Instagram or a Facebook post about with certain hashtags, you can use that. You can say, write in the voice of, you know, a, a lawyer, for example, write in, you know, whatever. It's really, Word Hero is great. You can also write in SEO keywords you want to write content for. It's very helpful for generating ideas and for writing blog posts. You can upload like 600 words of your own writing and have it rewrite it for you in a, in a different style or a more active voice. So Word Hero is really one of my favorites. Um, and I have a little video Word Hero training. If somebody buys it and wants to reach out to me, I can give them a little training that I did on it or send them the link to that. But um, And then Jasper, the same thing. I just suggest if you if you look at it and it's expensive and you think, I can't afford this every month, just think to yourself, okay, can I afford it for a month? And then get all of your ideas together and then do it for a month. And And I've had clients that have done that and have said that it's been helpful for them, not only because they wrote the content, we got it in really quick, but it really generated lots of ideas for their future. Mm. But as you know, you got to check, fact check, fact check, fact check. Yeah, exactly. When we were when we were having a quick discussion before we started recording, Jody and I were sharing stories about you know what can what can go wrong if you don't fact check. Um, mm-hmm. So so give me your example. Well, the, the biggest example was um, the the post that a client did, and she was pretty upset. She'd done a lot of the AI stuff, and she I had not told her to be careful of the fact checking because I just thought it was should be common knowledge to go back and look. But some of the the places that she mentioned were closed. There had been some that were the it was a it was actually a Mardi Gras, and there was um, the different routes, different times, different days. And none of that had been updated in in the post. So it was, you know, it was it was a not good because <laughs> she was writing the wrong content. Yeah. And um, my my example was um I mean I, I just I just put a prompt in to write write me or, or give me give me some ideas on a, a blog post to write about 10 things to do in Destin on a rainy day. And and it was brilliant. It came up with I don't know much about Destin. I've only ever been there once and just drove through, but it came up with all these ideas. And I, and I know easily I could have just copied and pasted and that was it. There's a blog post, 10 things to do in Destin on a rainy day. But mm-hmm. when I fact checked them, there were three or four that had been closed during COVID and yeah. were no longer operating. So right. absolutely 100% fact check yep. everything that comes yes. at you from AI. Yes. And insert your personality. I think that's the biggest thing I tell people when they ask about using it. It's a great tool, but you want to come across as authentically you, your brand voice, who you are, your helpful, wonderful, friendly self. And pretty soon people will be seeing the same content over and over and over again, because, you know, even though these, these chat tools are great, chat GPT and all of them are great they have to source their information from somewhere. So if everybody's sourcing from the same content and nobody's creating new content, nobody's coming up with their own ideas, then pretty soon everything's going to be stale. So the way you stand out is by bringing in that personality Mm -hmm. um, and then going back and talking about your own, you know, the secret ideas, the secret tips, your own personal favorite, you know? Yeah. Yeah, here's a great list of 10 restaurants, What's your favorite thing to eat there? Mm-hmm. ChatGPT can't come up with that. You can. Yeah. And you can yeah. tell your audience why it's your favorite. Yes. That, that's one thing it cannot do is write down your own experiences of doing yeah. something, how it made you feel. Right. And exactly. And that's so 
important to creating a real connection with your with your audience. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing. That's the connection that people are are really striving to get from businesses. Let's just uh, wrap up the last question about uh, ethical concerns. We all know that there's ethical concerns about writing essays for academic work. (laughs) But what about about ethics? You know, is, is it you know, if, if, if it comes up with something amazing, chat GPT, you know, write, write something, a blog post that is just astonishingly good. You change a few words. Is that plagiarism? So I suggest that if it, I always suggest take some snippets and, and run it through Google and see if you can find another article that uses those same words. I think that it has gotten to a point where it's not as much plagiarism because they, I mean, it, it's an amazing tool. It is able to string new words and phrases together and it's learning all the time how to do that better. Mm-hmm. Um, but you do need to check. And and I do have a story, Katie, my daughter is in an, um, was in anthropology last semester and there was a student in her class that got booted because they had used, created an entire uh, research power paper about and it was direct it was chat gpt but the professor could pull out the spots article that had been plagiarized not you know she was looking for new ideas now you know none of us are in college anymore or if we are we know better than that and your your blog post on your website is completely different if people start pointing that out and if google starts making that more of a priority then it could be you know, eventually not as useful to people because Google, Google is the one ultimately that decides if they're going to show your content to, to other people. Yeah, exactly. And uh, in- interesting, I, I had chat GPT write me something this morning about dynamic pricing and revenue management. And, and I asked it for some analogies and it came up with dynamic pricing. One of the key strategies in revenue management is like surfing. You're riding the waves of supply and demand, adjusting your prices in real time to catch the biggest waves and avoid getting wiped out. That was so familiar to me. That analogy was so familiar. And I've got to go and do that fact checking because I have seen that. Mm -hmm. Somebody else has written that. Mm -hmm. And it's a great analogy, but... Yes. It, it just, no, I, it's not yours. It's not mine. And right. I thought, I've seen this. I've seen this. So I'm, I'm definitely, if anybody's out there listening to this and they, and you wrote that, then <laughs> let me know. Anyway. Well, I've done the same thing. I've, I've seen things that it's written and I've looked and I've, I've been like, I saw that because you know, when I do some, and when I'm writing a blog for somebody, a destination, I do a lot of research first and I'm like, oh, I saw that. And and one I found was Asheville, North Carolina has a fantastic tourism website. And I found something that I was writing for another property in North Carolina, but it had pulled exact an exact sentence yeah. from that Asheville, North Carolina, Asheville site. And you have to be careful because people are going to start looking for their content. And yes. It's just like photos. Yeah. People people look for their photos. A lot of people, a lot of people don't know that, but if you take photos from the internet, then you can be sued if they belong to somebody else. So you have to be careful with your content. Yeah, you know, exactly. Not because they don't use it, just to say, be careful of how you use it. That is a great note to finish on. I know we could, as ever, we could just keep talking and talking about, about this subject. And, and of course you'll come back in a, couple of months and we will touch on something else and maybe AI has gone off in another <laughs> on another yes. tangent by then and we'll have loads more to talk about but uh, but until then Jody just give us a little bit of um, of background on what you do what you can offer to people and and the courses you do and and of course you you, you know you you and I partnered to bring the foundations course to vacation rental formula business school and uh, but you do have a ton of your own courses as well well yes I'm re and I'm currently building my new Instagram course. I've I have started it in 2018. And I um so if you're listening to this and you want to get on that list, I have an action, new action plan. I've had this since 2018, but I updated it this year with audio. So I've made an, a podcast episodes that are lessons 
for this Instagram action plan. And that's just like a free little download thing. But so I'm doing that. And of course, website design fills fills most of my days and, and I enjoy that. But um, the course that you and I did, if people haven't checked it out, they need to, because as we were going through this um, podcast today, I was like, kept thinking, oh, well, they should just go watch that video that we did in the course <laughs> <laughs> because we cover so much like about the branding, the environmental and stuff like that. We cover a lot of that in in the, the course that we've done. Um, I enjoy teaching and helping people. So, you know, anybody that wants to reach out to me, check me out on Instagram because you can reach out and ask me any questions and and people you know, maybe that's something we should tell people. People reach out to us and ask questions all the time after these podcasts, both of us. Yes. Yes. So, and we encourage yeah. it, you know, please yeah. do. <laughs> please do. We want to, we want to be as much help for you that we can without spilling our entire days. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Jody, thank you so much. Always an absolute pleasure to have you with me. Bye-bye. Thank you as ever, Jodie Bourne. Absolutely wonderful to chat with you. I'm not going to say much anymore about Vacation Rental Business School because Mike's going to be following up on this with a message to you. So suffice for me to say, it's a great course. It really is a great course. Jodie and I have put a lot into it. And although we call it a, you know, a foundation, it's not necessarily for just if you're new to the business. This is for anybody who really wants to perhaps backtrack and uh, and just sharpen up their skills in this business. And we are working on a number of uh, additional courses as well. And you're going to hear more about that over the next, uh, next few weeks and months. So thank you very much for tuning in today. And it's always so nice to be talking to you and particularly in this this really really exciting times that we are coming into now so i'm going to go enjoy the rest of my day i hope you will do the same and i'll see you again next week you've been listening to the vacation rental success podcast brought to you by the vacation rental formula business school Get access to the knowledge and education to take your short-term rental business to the next level. Visit vacationrentalformula.com forward slash biz school for more information. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.